Okay, here we go. 9.4, for polar form of a linear equation. Okay, and it's only three templates. I'll figure that out. So look on your formula sheet. <coughs> polar form of a linear equation is this one. It is right underneath converting polar to rectangular. And the other one we're using is the distance of a point, which is way up above. We've already done this one already. The distance of a point, D equals AX plus BY plus C all over the plus or minus the square root of A squared plus B squared. Everybody see that one too? So we've already done that one. This is the only new one. So, um, so there's two parts. Again, we're learning how to go from linear or algebra form to polar form. Yesterday, you learned how to mainly do the points, right? Linear to polar and polar to linear. And then you got a little taste of a basic polar equation at the end, right? The r equals negative 3 or whatever, and you turn it into a circle, right? These are more complex equations from linear to polar. So it's 12x minus 5y plus 13 equals 0 is linear, obviously. And you're going to turn this into polar. So I'm going to go over here and show you the steps. The first thing you're going to do is get y alone and graph it. We already did this already in a different chapter. This is just a repeat. So get y alone and graph it. Let's see. So negative 5y equals a negative 12x minus 13. Divide everything by a negative 5. You're going to get y equals a negative, or not negative, a positive 12 fifths x plus 13 fifths. y equals 12 fifths x plus 13 fifths, if you get y alone. Get y alone, and we're going to graph this linear equation. This was the last couple of problems on the last part of chapter 7, if you remember. And some of you weren't good at this, so maybe you get another try at trying to figure out um, the angle. So you graph this first. You put your first dot at 13 fifths. It doesn't matter, but it's about right here is where 13 fifths is located on the y-axis. And what kind of a slope is this? A positive slope or a negative slope? Positive. So you're going to make a line that's positive. You're not going to make a line that's negative, right? So that's a positive slope. The line from the origin to that line is called the normal. Do you guys remember this? We're going to find the angle of the normal, and we're going to find the distance of that normal. We're going to find the angle and the distance. And we're going to put it into this equation. P equals R cosine of theta minus alpha. P up there is the distance, and alpha is the angle. The R and the theta stay in your problem as an equation. We went from linear to polar, and this is the polar form of a linear equation. So we need to figure out the square root of a squared plus b squared. You guys remember doing this? That's step number two. The square root of a squared plus b squared. Um, this is the a, this is the b, and this is the c, correct? So 12 squared is 144 plus 25, which is 169, right? And the square root of 169 is 8. 
you remember what you did with that 13? Anybody remember from chapter 7 what you did with 13? Yep, divide everything by 13. So set number 3. Divide everything by the a squared plus the b squared. And now you're pretty much done. All you have to do is put it into the equation form. Okay, so what's the final answer? This 13 over 13 is the p. It's the distance of that normal, if you remember from chapter 7. It's the distance. It's the p. 13 divided by 13 is 1. It's never a negative number. It's always a positive. It doesn't matter if this is a negative out in front. P stands for the distance of that little red line. It's 1. So it's going to be 1 equals R cosine of theta minus, there's a minus sign in there, you just follow the formula, and we're going to figure out what the angle is. The x is associated with cosine, correct? And the y is associated with sine. It doesn't matter which one you do. I like doing the first one. I think that's what you guys did on the test, if you remember. Inverse cosine of 12 13 inverse sine of 5 13 It doesn't matter which one you do. You should get the same reference angle if you only work with the positive values, I guess. So cosine inverse, cosine inverse of 12 13 Cosine inverse of 12, 13 is 22.6 degrees, or 23, or whatever you want to use. 23 degrees? That can't be the answer, though. And that's what some of you are not getting right on the test. Which quadrant are we in for that little red marker? Second quadrant. 23 cannot be the answer. That's called the reference angle again, kind of like yesterday. If you don't know how to find the actual angle, you're going to have a hard time on this test getting all the answers right, right? You need to make sure, like yesterday, you had to figure out which quadrant you're in. Today, you have to figure out which quadrant in. We're in the second quadrant, and the angle was 23 degrees. You can round up. I don't care on the test. In order to get to this quadrant from 90 to 180, what do you have to do with 23 degrees? Subtract. What do we have to subtract? 180, right? We have to subtract 180 to get in there. So what's 180? Take away 23. 157 degrees is what's going to go in the spot. You went from a linear equation to a polar equation. A linear equation to a polar equation. I think I've got another one. It's not bad to do two of them. It's nice to do two of them. Two of them, so you know how to do it. There's only two parts today, so. Okay, let's do another one, just like this. X plus 2Y minus 3 equals 0. Step number 1 is to get Y alone. 3 minus X. I added 3, I subtracted X's, and I'm going to divide by 2. So it's 3 halves minus one half of an x. Time consuming because you have to graph it. The reason why you have to graph it is you need to know which quadrant you are in so that you can figure out your angle. Um, graph it. Some of you have a graphing calculator and you can plug in three halves minus one half x and it'll give you the graph. Some of you have to do it the long way but it only takes about a second to graph it. You put your first dot at one and a half which is about right there on the y-axis. This one has a negative slope, so you have to go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2 is going to look like this. What we're trying to fill in is the p equals the r cosine of theta minus the alpha. And what we're going to fill in is the P, which stands for the distance, and the alpha, which is this little, or the origin to that line is that little red line called the normal, and it's used in calculus. 
excused a lot in calculus, that little red line there. And we're going to find the distance to the um, diagonal line and the angle that it makes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the square root of a squared plus b squared. The a is 1, which is 1, and the b is 2, which is 4, which makes the square root of 5. You can write it as a decimal, you can leave it as the square root of 5. I, I leave it as the square root of 5. Because all I'm going to do is divide all of these by the square root of 5. And then I put my pen down because I'm just going to start plugging things into my calculator. This number right here, ignore the negative sign, is the distance of that little red line, 3 divided by the square root of 5. And 3 divided by the square root of 5 is 1.3. 1.3. I'm going to erase the P, and in place of it, I'm going to put 1.3. So that's what 3 divided by the square root of 5 is. It's the distance. It doesn't matter that there's a negative sign. And then the angle I'm going to erase. And I'm going to do the cosine one. You can do the sine or cosine. I'm going to do the co cosine of 1 divided by the square root of 5. Cosine inverse of 1 divided by the square root of 5. And I'm going to get 63 degrees. The other one was 23 degrees. This one's 63 degrees. Is that what you guys are getting? 63 now we have to figure out if we, that's just the reference angle, right? 63 degrees is just the reference angle. We have to know which quadrant we're in, right? Some of you already know which quadrant we're in. We know that we're in the which quadrant? First quadrant. So it is 63 degrees for this angle. And that's it for the first part. That's the problem. That should hopefully understand how to do it. So. Okay, the second part is... We have two of these. Obviously, you can tell that these are in polar form. This is what we just got the answers, right? This is in polar form, and they want you to put it back into a linear form, the x's and the y's, right? So, um, if you flip your paper over to the front side, we're kind of using stuff from other chapters. We use that, um, that distance of a point from chapter 7. And I think the sum and difference, way down in the bottom, there in the corners, the sum and difference, we use those also. Um, I think it was chapter 7. Cosine of alpha plus or minus beta, sine of alpha plus, or, everybody see those down there? The one that we're going to use is the cosine one. Everybody see the cosine one down there? So there's a 3, there's an R, and then the part that I'm going to highlight is this cosine of theta minus 150. And if you look on the front, there's an alpha and a beta. This is a theta and a 150. I'm just going to make the bracket. You can use parentheses or whatever you want. But if you look at the formula on the front, the formula goes cosine alpha, cosine beta, and then sine alpha sine beta, and that's what you're going to use. You're going to do a cosine of theta. You're going to do a cosine of 150 degrees. If that's a minus sign in there, if that's a minus, the sign in there is a plus. Everybody see that? If that's a minus, everybody look at that. If it's a minus, it's in the bottom. The one on the bottom, on the right side, is a plus. So we're going to do the sine of theta and the sine of 150. And then what you're supposed to do now is to distribute the r into both of them for the next step. 3 equals r cosine of theta cosine of 150 plus sine, oops, I forgot the r, r sine of theta, sine of 150. And then, you just put it all together now. 
3 equal. I'm going to highlight this. R cosine of theta stands for something that we learned about on the back side of the formula sheet. We just learned about what R cosine of theta stands for, right? It stands for the letter X. And you're going to put an X there. And obviously, R sine of theta stands for the letter Y. Does it, does it look like it's turning into an algebra problem with X's and Y's, right? And with X's and Y's, with X's and Y's, are there sometimes numbers in front of the X's and the Y's, the 12 and the 5 and the 13, right? So obviously, where are we getting the numbers? These are the numbers that are going to go in front of the X's and the Y's. What's the cosine of 150 and the sine of 150? You're not supposed to use your calculator. We're supposed to be able to do these by making a picture, correct? So... 150 degrees is over here with a reference angle of 30. Remember, the, the whole concept of trigonometry is using these wonderful popular angles of 150. Opposite of 30 is 1. Opposite of 60 was a negative root 3. And the hypotenuse at 150 degrees is 2. The cosine of this picture is a negative root 3 over 2, i got to get a little negative in there. And the sine of this picture is 1 half. And then, if you really want to know what the answer key looks like in the back of the book, if you look at the linear form, they usually don't have fractions in linear form, so they're going to multiply every term by 2, so that you can look to see what the answer key says in the back of the book. The answer in the back of the book will have a 6 here because they multiply the 3 by 2. When you multiply this by 2, the 2 is going to go away and the only thing left is a negative root 3 x's. And when you multiply by 2 here, the only thing that's left is 1 y. There's your x, your y. You can put them all together on one side and set it equal to 0 if you want to. You can bring these all over. I don't care. You have it in the right form. You don't have to. Didn't it start off? Yeah. Do you see this one has the x first, then the y first, then the number, then the equal zero? You don't have to have it in that form. But if you're checking your answers in the back of the book, they get rid of the fraction. So, okay, let's just do one more of these, and that's it for the day. This is in polar form. You can tell that it looks like it's in polar form. And we're going to change it into x's and y's. You're going to put a 1 down. You're going to put an equal. You're going to put an r down. And I'm just going to start making my brackets. And remember, cosine goes cos, cosine, sine, right? Cos, cosine, sine. I love saying that. Cos, cosine, sine. You don't even need a formula. Sheet. Just do the cosine of theta, the cosine of 30, the sine of theta, the sine of 30. If this is a plus sign, this is a minus sign. If you don't want to do and write this whole middle step out, you don't have to sit there and write it out. A lot of you know that our cosine of, I mean, you can just write um, 1 equals. You can just start here and write the answer down already, right? You can make a picture. In the first one, you made a picture of 150 degrees. In this one, you're going to make a picture at 30 degrees. They don't want you to use your calculator, so it's not that hard to make a quick little picture at 30. It goes 1, root 3, and 2. It just so happens, I wish I would have picked 1. I should have changed that to 45 degrees so that you would have had a little bit of a taste of a 45 degree one. But you get the idea, right? Um, so this R cosine of theta stands for the X. This stands for X. What's in front of the X? The cosine of 30 with root 3 over 2. Again, should I change to 45 to get how to do the 45? Because it would be, it'd be like a root 2 over 2, right? If it was a 45, so we're good. And then a minus sign. 
and the sine of this picture is one half, but it's r sine of theta, so you know you have a y. This one, I should have changed this to a different angle. But anyways, that's what that looks like. Multiply everything by 2, and you're pretty much what the back of the book looks like. 2 equals root 3x minus y. Final answer. The assignment is page 578. And I'm giving you five problems. 15 through 23 odds. You can do all of them. It used to be all back in the day, and I switched it to odds. So you only have five to do. There's an odd amount, and there's only two parts. I think I gave you three of the harder parts of making the graphs and figuring out which quadrant you are in. I think I only gave you two of these because these aren't as hard as the first one. So you have five. And if you feel like you need to do more than five, do more than five. So.